Hey, what is up, Limitless Nation? It's your boy, Coach Andy Reese, coming to you live here on Mind Gym Mondays, where you are going to learn the strategies, the tactics, the techniques, and the tools that you can put into action to train your brain and get better from the inside out. I am so stoked to be with you here today with my main man, my new friend and fellow room tilter, Hubert Payne. Coming to you live here. What's up, Hubert? Uh oh, we got a little bit. We got a little bit of sound action too. We're waiting for we're waiting for Hubert sound. There we go. There we go. So I want to give a shout out. There we go. There we go. We're okay. Here we go. What's up, man? What What's up, Andy? How you doing, buddy? Hey, good brother. And then before I get into this, I want to you know give a shout out to to DJ uh, Mari, who's on the ones and twos, always making it look good on the background. And she is uh, we could not do this without you. So thank you, Absolutely. Mari. So this is our first live together, man. What's up? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited, man. We had a good conversation and a lot of similarities. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get into what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, likewise, man. You know, so we, we found out connecting the dots with Hubert and I. We both played. We're both running backs in college, you know, you know, yeah, the yeah, rock, yeah. bring it, you know, bring in the block, bring it, BYOB, bring your own block, right? You know, uh, slightly dated <laughs> offense. I was right. a fullback. I was a fullback. He was a running back. He was a guy. He was the sexy guy scoring all the points, doing the touchdown <laughs> dances, making it happen. You know, too. I was. I, I was don't know about blunt, sexy, but I was the blunt instrument of pain, man. You know, and I was like, so that's why I had to go to army, so I actually run the rock like you. <laughs> so you guys like you making it look good, you know. But right, we also right. are passionate about serving others, and we currently work with uh, NFL clients as well too. Absolutely. But we are. Today is all about, you know, getting in that mind gym, right? You know, so let's just, you know, I want to hear what, mm -hmm. you know, we love to walk the talk. We're all about that integrity, closing that gap between what we say and what we do. You know, I know here at Limitless Minds, you know, we don't ask anybody to do things that we don't do ourselves, right? So Hubert, what are you working on to train right. your mind? Ooh, ooh, where do I start? Um, right now, I'm definitely trying to uh, establish some habits that build the person that um, I got some new business ventures and like knowing that I'm, I'm trying to get off the ground yep. and I'm more focused on who do I need to be to execute it. Right. And so uh, number one, for me, my fitness, I want to, um, I'm recovering from some, some, a couple bad knee surgeries. Okay. And uh, I'm like, man, for me, it starts with, you know, that's my Achilles, man. My, my, my fitness, I'm trying to get my fitness yeah. in order. Uh, we're going to, talk about mission today and yeah. i and i loved the like when i went through your exercise of and we'll get to it of uh, trying to trying to yeah. just man organize my i got a bunch of baby trying to get a business off the ground i'm a musician and i want my my energy yeah. to be really intentional so that's what i'm working on right now yeah no I, I love that man i mean you know it jumps out to me you're talking about that mind body connection and that connection between you know, our physical fitness and our mental fitness and how that helps us, you know, with our most important yeah. performances, which, you know, you know, by the way, we also have in common that we have the populate the earth strategy. He's got five, I got four together. We almost got like a, uh, we can almost play <laughs> basketball full court, right? You know, almost, almost. That's you right. Know. That's right. That's I don't right. know about you, but my knees are kind of bad too. So I'll be coaching. I don't, I'm not going to be running up and down with the court with those young kids. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I, you know, that's, that's right. That's yeah. Go ahead, man. You know, I'm just saying that, that that that's right, man. I'm I'm just trying to. I just want to at least be here, right? Uh, took a lot of hits in football, so yeah, <laughs> I, I could I could throw the ball, but you know, not a, not a ton of running at this point. Yeah, exactly. We're all all time quarterback. And we're playing football, right? You know, so we'll, we'll uh, no, but uh, right. you know, one of the things that we're going to be talking about today too, you know, is this idea of mission and purpose. And what I like to do is really quick go to the chat here and do something. We'll switch it up a little bit different. I want to find out the people who are taking your time. First of all, thank you for engaging with us this year, spending some time on a Monday, you know, rolling into it to be with us and give us your time, your energy and your attention. I want to find out in the chat, you know, when it comes to this idea of purpose and mission, what do you want to get out of today? You know, what do you, what do you want to get out of this as well too, you know, and maybe let's just start with you and I, like, you know, what, what do we want to get? We want to be here and get clear. Yeah. So for you, you know, you know, if you're listening to this, what would you want to get out of, you know, walking away with in terms of mission and purpose? Well, man, streamline. I want to like, as, as soon as I started thinking about, you know, well, what is my mission? Yeah. Right. 
because there are a lot of different things that I could do. And sometimes confusion can really, it, it'll just keep you, it'll, it'll impede your progress, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think the mission will help me get some clarity and I'm excited about that. Yeah. Like being clear on what I'm doing because it'll help me be more decisive in my decision making. Yeah. And who I decide to partner with right. and, and what direction I go. Yeah. Right. I, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just really how and how do we, how do I be able to prioritize my most precious resources, which is my attention, my energy, you know, within the construct of time. I've got some folks getting here. We got Martin Greenlee writes, you know, in terms of his intentions are how do you keep on keeping your mission and purpose day in and day out? So that goes into the accountability piece which we'll hit on that as well too. Rebecca, thank you for uh, chiming in. She wants to see how to overcome limiting beliefs. And so those are two great outcomes that we want to hit on here as well too. So thank you for putting that out there, right? We always talk about the hype and limitless minds. And so we've got our intentions right then and there too. So let's talk about, you know, what uh, a mission and a purpose is. And let's talk about, you know, what it's not, right? So first of all, you know, you and I work with a lot of different organizations and leaders and teams and individual athletes and performers, right? And for those people of a business background, you're going to think about some of the fundamental blocking right. and tactical things when we're a startup and we're trying to get started here or we have an athletic team, you know, this idea of having a vision and a mission and values, right? So a vision is like, is an aspirational version of yourself that you may not ever get to, right? It's kind of known as the North Star. And values are really those uh, those principles that really matter to us. And those we talk about those first principles because that's the core of who we are as an individual. But a mission is a little bit different, right? Because that really gives us a focus and it covers three fundamental things, right? And again, that's this right. comes from the military. And, it, and the military, this idea of mission that translates over to business and even to football has three fundamental elements. One talks about who's involved, right? You know, so who are the primary stakeholders involved in the process of what the mission focus is number two is what do we fundamentally mm -hmm. do and the third thing is this idea of purpose or why do we do it so fundamentally a mission statement is a concise statement that gives us clear focus and priorities on the who the what and the why what's your so you know I, mm. so what do, what's your take on uh why mission so important you know and specifically organizationally and at an individual level which we don't often think about an individual or personal mission, right, Hubert? So why are missions so important from your perspective based on your work and your life? So a couple of things that, that came up for me when you were saying that. Uh, number one, the mission helps us prioritize, keep the main things the main yep. things. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I started writing my mission, we talked about who and I think initially I wanted to make a mission that reflected how I organized my yep. business. Right. But there is, I, I started feeling nasty. Daddy. Okay. <laughs> to yeah. be honest. Right. Cause I'm like, man, I don't care what I'm doing. I can't make a mission that doesn't include um, my faith and my yep. family, my baby right. first. Um, and, and I, and I think it's possible to hold yep. both. Right. I think it's possible, and, and that's one thing the mission will help clear up, yeah. right? It's like, yes, it's possible to wake up and your being um, edify your family and your yep. business, right? So for me, um, it, it did that. It did that for me. And then, um, man, the first line of my mission when I wrote it down, uh, what felt right and true and authentic to me was I wrote, I am a wounded mm. human. Wow. And... And it just, it, it, it was just like, man, I felt like peace just rushed all over yeah. me because like this pressure of having to be something yeah. before I'm accepted yeah. or ignore like the things that I'm working yeah. through, right? Or ignore past times where I may, may have come up yeah. short. Yep. I can take that too and show up in excellence. Yeah. So um, that was, it was a huge step for me now. Um, and we could get into this yeah. some more. Another thing that came up was after I wrote the mission, I'm a wounded healer who's dedicated to developing and executing transformational techniques. Mm -hmm. That's um, what that's what you did. First thing yeah. that came up, man, man, you know, who who are you? Are you qualified yeah, yeah, to do yeah. that? Like that's what that imposter like syndrome, what, right? What letters do you have yeah. behind you? Right, right, right. So it's that imposter syndrome thing. But then, you know, I have the opportunity to say, 
well, do I need more education? If I'm still here, I can go do that. Or do I just need to address it and and, and, and make sure that, you know, um, I'm surrounding myself with the right people who right. can close the gaps of things that I may not know. Yeah. So it leads to partnerships, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I, I think what jumps out to me and I hear you talk about, it, which is very important when we come up with our mission, our personal mission statement, which is a little bit different organizationally because it usually starts with I, but it, it involves like we never do anything alone. So it involves multiple people, right? Personal mission statement transcends our personal professional lives because at, at, at Limitless Minds, we're about work-life integration. It's not necessarily a balance. There's no such thing. There's only just one you. So I like that you mm -hmm. talked about it. It's something that transcends your roles, both as a father and a husband, but also as a, as a coach, right? Right. You know, and I, so I think it, you, you, it sounds like you incorporated some of your values, which is fundamental, right? So if you were to pick like one or two value of your core values that you would incorporate in your mission statement, what would those, those, you know, one to three things be? Hmm. Core values in my mission. Yeah. I definitely, for, for me, because um, like we talked about this last week um, and it's, there's a pyramid of, of places to intervene when it comes to developing uh, like where to intervene for change. Right. Yeah. And on the lowest level, like you want to change your environment, um, you can change your beliefs, your skills. Right. But at the highest part is my faith. Mm -hmm. If my Love mission that. isn't rooted in my. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have a tough time organizing the rest of everything else, right? So that's a that's right. a value that's super important. Um, now, right. when it comes to relating with other people, they may they don't need to have the same mission, but if I'm right. firm in my own, it's, it's it I almost have more agility and agreeableness, right? Yeah, yeah. So right, definitely those principles. They, yeah, the faith part. What what. I love the faith yeah. piece is so important too because it's so, over. So so yeah, I think for me, um, there's three big things. One, this is this will reflect on my mission statement, which we'll, we'll show later. One is service, right? You know, to me, you know, growing up as a Boy Scout, um, yeah, involved in my church, and then you know, spending a career in the military, service is at to others, you know, and helping others is at the core of who I am, right? Then this idea, you know, about yeah. competition, which I know are. One of our co-founders, Russell Wilson, is all about based on Pete Carroll's philosophy, right? It's how do you the continual process of improvement and always trying to, you know, push to the edge of yourself, right? And then the other this idea about learning and growth. Yeah. You know, those those are like my three things that I incorporated in the mission, right? You know, but the whole I purpose is why value is important because it it answers the the identity piece about who, the, the who piece of the mission, right? And so the who should the who in the mission statement should reflect your core values because that's your identity. That's who you are, right? So before we get into the what that's and the right. why, we got to talk about who am I, right? And I think that's a fundamental philosophical mm -hmm. question, yeah. So then the next piece, Hubert, is is the why. And this kind of gets into the Simon Sinek golden circle model here, right, too. So purpose is like my purpose for being and doing, right? You know, what is my big picture why I do what I do, right? Both personally and professionally, right? And you right. Know, so for you, when you think about purpose, like why is that? Why is it important to to get clear on your why, Hubert? And, and please give us an example of what your why is. Okay, so I'll, I'll share a story real quick. Um, um, uh, so I was I was uh, I was driving in my car, and I'm always listening to content or like, you know, trying to extract principles or whatever. And I heard someone was speaking about something completely different than what, you know, was on my heart and my mind. But it was this idea of asking a question, where's the learning? Yeah. Right. And and if you take even the purpose of like marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got I got so excited about this because it was just a different frame. And what it was, was I started thinking like, man, what if the whole point of marriage was just to learn? Mm -hmm how to love unconditionally. Yeah. Wow. That keeps you in a seat of always asking, yeah. man, where's the learning? When you get into resistance, well, what can I learn here? Mm. And when I learn, I'm building, right? Mm. So that changes the whole perspective, right? Yeah. And I think that's super important um, in the like that. So what if, mm -hmm. you know, my curiosity turned into, you know, passion and, and whatever yep. is pulling me, the journey is just an opportunity for development. 
and then we can yep. reframe, you know, all kinds of things that come at us that may be perceived as negative, right? right. We can always flip that switch. Yeah. So I think that's a, that that that's what came up for me when you when you asked yeah. that question. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also think about just hearing your story uh, in the green room ahead advance, right? I mean, you know, obviously you being a master of your trade craft as a drummer for two decades, you know. Let's shout out to little Big Town, man, and you know the man who's the backbone behind the yeah, yeah, right? for sure, Big Hubert. You know, but, but you, when you talked about when you first got that opportunity to work at the retreat setting, and how you were able to translate your knowledge, skills, experience to serve others, right? It sounded like you kind of found your purpose that you you were looking for in this next evolution of your life. Like, what was that? What was that like? And I want to hear about from well before you answer that, I want to hear like what is your purpose? So for those who are plugging in. We talked about the who based on your values, but what's your purpose? What's your big picture? Why you're, you know, not only your reason for being, but your reason for doing, you know, when, in terms of your, the roles and the different hats you wear in your life, you know? So talk to me about that, you know, that, that new purpose that you found, you know, later in your life, what was that like Hubert? Yeah. So I, I think, um, to back up a step, I think my curi I think my curiosity, pointed to my purpose yeah um, ever since i was a young boy i was always asking my mom can i go run across the street can i go run laps so i can train for when i'm like 10 when i can play football right yeah. so i was always like curious about development and how to you know impose my will or uh compete at a high level yeah and then i got <laughs> you know you get into life and i started realizing like man a lot of times what holds people back is the uh, you know the the inside stuff yep. emotional intelligence or lack thereof right. or not knowing how to process trauma right. um and so for me i think my purpose um i think i've been processed to help to develop amazing transformational technique techniques to mm -hmm. help people process pain yep move through walls and yeah um i think and uh um, yeah. You know, I, I was thinking of a, a crazy exercise or uh, this morning when I was just doing some some personal work. And I was like, you know, if you think of three things that happened to you last week, three things that um, were you didn't see them coming. Right. Yeah. Three outcomes. Right. Or two outcomes in a conversation you didn't see coming. Right. Yeah. What we do is we draw a circle around those three things and then there's a narrative. Yeah, we awesome. just naturally connect the dots. Yeah, right. But the opportunity of creating a mission and understanding your purpose, you get to control that narrative. That's right. right? So no matter what happens, no no matter what happens, you process it mm -hmm. and it helps you build forward. Yep. Like for me last week, I, I I took a rental car to a speaking engagement. I drove it back ten hours. I parked it in front of my house, and somebody knocked at my front door and said, "I'm so sorry, lady." Just Totaled the car. Oh, and I totaled the rental car. Like what? Holy cow! So, wow. so the, the good thing. Wow. Um, and she was okay. You know, I was. She's, she's healthy and all that, but so I don't know. But um, then I stepped on a nail. Right, stepped on a, a, a freaking nail. My wife had to like pull it out of the bottom of my shoe, and all these things are happening. And I had a decision. You know, I had a. I'm I'm going to get to the point here but this is so important. I got my Uber yesterday and a, and a lady somebody cut her off and she was like, "Well, huh, that's just Orlando." And I thought in my head, "Man, we all got a decision to process these things and yeah. put a narrative around it." Yeah. But as I kept asking her questions, she was saying, "You know, I just moved back here 3 months ago. I've been traveling abroad and I don't know if this is the place for me." But if we could sit down with her, right? Yeah. And say, hey, what's your mission? What's your why? What's your purpose? Yeah. I think we can kind of reframe the way that she's organizing her experience. Yep. And I think that's so important for a lot of us. Yeah. All of us. No, really. it, it's, you know, it's a great story because we've all had those Murphy type of days when anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Murphy shows up and just yep. ruins your, yep. he or she just ruins your day, right? You know, and that's that choice that we all have between the stimulus and the response or when the stimulus just is beating us down. Right. And I think what you said is really true. Like our purpose help, you know, our purpose and our mission does that too. So let's, let's get tactical and practically real quick to rift on what Huber's talking about. Mario, do you mind showing this real quick? 
So real quick resource, great resource. If you've not read Simon Sinek's Start With Why, this is where this comes from. This is called the Golden Circle Exercise. So here's a very simple three-step process on how to develop your purpose. You know, and again, this comes from a baseball example. As you all know who are listening, you know, I came, uh, I worked with Major League Baseball for three years, three different teams. And when I was working with the Reds, this is what we used to help players who hadn't even really thought about this, right? How do I develop this, this you know, uh, how do I get this rudder to be able to move me to where I want to go? Well, first of all, it starts with the center. And that's, you know, understanding what's my cause, what do I believe in, and what, what, insp- what inspires me. And that may start with something like what Huber was talking about, something I'm passionate about. Like Huber talks about, you know, hey, you know, he was just as passionate about becoming a drummer as he was about playing football. So that became his purpose, right? And then his mission was then to become mm-hmm. the best drummer he could be, right? Same thing. Well, I'm a servant leader in the army, right? Well, how do I continue to serve others? Well, by getting, becoming a mental performance coach, right? Well, it takes, took some iteration for us to get there, right? But so don't think that you're going to get this right in the bullseye right away. The point is to experiment and iterate with this. So start with that. And then the second piece is to get into the process. And a lot of the details of this gets into goal pursuit, which we're not going to discuss a lot today too. But then the third piece of this is the what. And again, this is the last piece of finding your purpose, which is part of your mission statement. And these are the results. And then it consists of the outcomes or what's produced. So we're talking about two things, main things, the process and the product because equal are important, right? It's important that we have a process of an art and science that goes into developing something, but then we have to get results, right? You know, winning matters, right? So we got to get stuff mm-hmm. done, right? You know, so that's the golden circle exercise. Have you, had you ever heard of that or use that, you know, and it has that align with what you use or to the audience, what do you use and have you used the golden circle before we want to hear your example. So what are your thoughts there, you know, and using that golden circle, Hubert? Yeah. I've, I love that on paper um, and write a step. It's a huge step. Um, and I've talked about this on previous lives, but I use a lot of, coaching uh, and, and with the, that our, our internal environment is different part yep here they interact with each other is how we show up in relationship so that's seen before but that is really awesome to kind of like streamline you know why and, and what is the purpose and what am i curious about right answer those questions man you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. I don't, man, what, like, how are you going to get to purpose? Sure. Or maybe, maybe I've experienced something that has blunted my, um, my, my passion and zeal. Right. That, and then you can get into your golden circle. So I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I, and yeah, Rebecca, I was asking us to throw that graphic up here. So the two, there it is. If you want to take a screenshot of it. You can also, you know, you can find this, uh, you can Google it. There's different versions that are out there as well, Rebecca, but thanks for flagging that as well too. But I'm, I'm glad while she's screenshotting that, you know, I'm glad you talked about the difference between purpose and passion because, you know, they, they say that passion is a little bit overrated, right? And every, you know, around the time of May, June, every commencement speaker talks about following your passion. Well, the reality is passion is based on emotion. It doesn't have the staying power, right? But if you have a purpose, right, you, it'll help you find your passion, right? Because our passion kind of comes mm-hmm. and goes, right? But when we have a strong purpose, that is something that can give us alignment, you know, for a very long time, right? And help us find something that we didn't think we were passionate about, but all of a sudden we may start by hating it and then we like it and then all of a sudden we love it, right? Um, so let's, for the next five minutes here, let's, you know, throw the mission statement up here too. So let's put it all together here. And again, mm-hmm. we want to give you guys something to be able to walk away with a, a product and give you some examples. So again, the mission is talking about who, so who am I, you know, who are we? You know, if this is talking about beyond self, if you're talking about your team, we're talking about what we do and we're talking about why we do it, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to start, first of all, take those individual parts, start to put them together. And then I want you to continue to whittle them down, right? And I want you to make them, it should be personal, right? It should be done in the first person. So I am, we are like it already happened, right? Using self-talk principles. It should be powerful in nature, right? It should yeah. be authentic and reflect, you know, who I am. It should include your core values in terms of the what. And then again, and then you want to make it concise. So the challenge here is, and again, 
this is difficult, right? And it's going to take you a couple iterations to do this, to get it down to 240 characters or less, right? And we're going to give you 100 characters because I used to say back, back in the day, Twitter is 140 characters, right? So when I'm asking leaders to do a leadership philosophy or I'm asking organizations or individuals to do a mission statement, we restrict it to 240 characters, right? What, you know, what's your take on why do you think that is? Why is it so important to have a concise and easy to remember mission statement, Hubert? Oh, I'd say a, a number of reasons, a number of reasons. I think, um, you know, cl cl I mean, clarity is always great. And how can you be decisive if, if you know, you, you, like for me, I started seeing where I'm, I'm not decisive. When I was writing, I'm like, man, I got I to gotta clean that up. And wait a minute, I, I'm like t speaking to three different priorities as one, and it should be one, right? And if it's one, right. I'm not going to get into a bunch of characters. Um, yeah. Man, right. what are my values? Wait a minute. Um, well, these two can't both be my value. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, gonna, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, no, you know, I gotta. It's gonna help me clean, clean up, and and, and downsize, right? So, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think that's great. I, I think it's awesome um, because you know we only got so much energy, man. You know, yeah. And a lot of high yeah. achievers think of think of you know we can just do everything, but. We only have so much energy and it's just best to yep. be organized with it. No, you're right. You know, as, as an officer and, you know, leading men and women in combat, right? You know, we, for every one of our, you know, we would have different missions, you know, uh, that would come along, right? And that would get published in an operations order and so, so forth. Well, the average soldier, you know, who's, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, yeah. they're not reading the op order and it's the telephone game, right? So when I was out doing battlefield circulation, I get a chance to talk to soldiers. I would always ask them, What's the mission? And it was my job as a commander is to make sure that mission that aligns all of us in terms of mm. who we are, what we do, and why we're doing it is all aligned, right? And they didn't have to paraphrase it back verbatim, but as long as they understood the gist of what the mission was, then I knew that we were all on the same page in terms of you know what we were what we we're trying to go trying to accomplish, right? So just as an example here too, I want to show up, uh, Marty. You might throw up my uh, my example, and you know the last couple minutes here, we'd love to hear yours. Um, so I'll break this down, all the pieces as well. Um, you know, so here's my personal mission statement, right? So, you know, my mission is to be able to serve leaders and teams by forging their mental strength to learn, compete, win, and grow from the inside out. So obviously the the obviously the who is me providing a service, but it it's not about me, but it starts with me. But I want to help leaders and teams specifically, right? Teams of, in all kinds of different arenas. What do I want to do? I want to help them forge their mental strength. Right. You know, and, mm -hmm. and it's reflecting my values in terms of service, in terms of learning, competition and growth. Right. And so and then how do we do that? We do that by giving them the mental and emotional skills to do this from the inside out. And again, this isn't something that I came up with like first shot. You know, it's not one shot, one kill. Right. It's not how it doesn't work yeah, like yeah. that. Right. You know, this has taken years and years and years for me to figure out. And if you're asking me when I was 25, what this looks like when I was 45, it may look a little bit different. So I'm curious, Huber, you know, what, what's your mission statement? Well, this is awesome, number one, because I, I, I found some blind spots. I found uh, some stuck states in my business yeah. um, and, where, and, and, and where I need to, like, focus my energy because I got, to the, I got the first part. Um, I am a wounded healer who – develops transformational coaching yeah uh develops and um and, and executes transformational coaching techniques right for, um and then i started getting to my like who who do i serve yeah and man i i couldn't find an avatar i'm like okay People. i just want anybody with a heart <laughs> like a human like yep. like i've the um and <laughs> and and uh and i think that for me it brought up a ton of anxiety because I couldn't, I couldn't uh, narrow it down. So this mission exercise really helped me see yeah. where, man, maybe I'll have more conviction when I, you know, put some more thought into this. Yeah. And 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 and, and realize like maybe it moves in seasons. It does. Maybe I help these people for this particular season. Yeah. And then and then the next season it'll be a new group of people. Right. right. So that final part of my mission, that's my homework. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Yeah. And, and that's the last point, Hebert, is that, hey, this should be a living document, right? You know? And, that's right. And so this should be something that is continuing to be able to evolve, right? And it's because we constantly change. Our mission 
you know, should have some sort of evolution with us as well, too. You know, I wouldn't like herky jerky do, you know, but in terms of the iteration that getting that one percent better. And then sometimes, you know, again, we find things that completely changes, you know, who we want to become and our mission should you yeah. know, help us align with that, too. So hope you guys uh, today, you know, got some value out of the developing a personal mission statement, starting with, you know, who you are based on your values, what you want to be able to do, you know, and then why yeah. you want to be able to do it with your purpose. Uh, if you want to find out more great resources like this that can help you and your team, you know, train your brain and get better from the inside out, please download that, that uh, Club Limitless app. You know, you can always reach out to us for more great information. We'd love to be able to be a relevant, responsive resource for you. Hubert, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Mari, thank, thank you. you, Andy. Yeah, and thank you, yeah. everyone who joined us today, Limitless Live. Stay tuned. Next, uh, same back channel, same black place uh, tomorrow <laughs> for more great uh, live content on how to make you and your team better. We'll see you in the arena.